So I've been programming since early 90s. Even now I write a little bit of code, but not as hands-on as I used to be. And I got into security by being hacked. I remember when I was uh, leading a project, uh, one of our earlier customers called me and said, hey, I want to show you something. Right? So we were developing this unified communication app that did voice, chat, email, everything, right? And he's like, okay, let's do a chat session. And he literally threw a digital pie at my face. I'm like, how did you do that, right? And he showed me it was a basically cross-site scripting, right? So the first thing I asked him is not how, but why. Like, why would you do that, right? So, you know, as developers, right, you're all hired to add value to your organization, right? And there's a saying that, you know, developers add value and security adds trust, right? Security is an afterthought. And, and what I'm going to show you today is something very different but it's going to be a very technical uh, presentation. So I, I wanted to keep it interesting, so I'm going to switch between slides and like live exploits and stuff. So that's me. So up until a few months back, I was heading the engineering team for Psycode in the field, but um, I switched over to the sales side. So I run a lot of customers from the North Central. And so I do have to put this here because some of the things you learn today, there are systems out there that you can hack, right? So I hope you guys don't go and <laughs> try these out, right? And I can't take any responsibility. And I mean, if any of you are um, certified ethical hacker, you know that there are ground rules. You know, you cannot, um, you know, without authorization, you cannot try to do that. So this will be the high level agenda. We'll quickly touch upon, you know, what is the CACD pipeline. And then most of this topic is going to be about GitHub action, but just think the same thing you can do with any other system, whether it's our two CIs or GitLab runners. Okay? So I do want to give uh, credit to our research team. So our CTO, Ronan and Alex, who heads our research, they discovered this in the wild, right? So I'm presenting, you know, I'm part of their team, but the credit goes to them for you know, uncovering some of these things. So just a show of hands, like how many of you are developers? Nobody? Okay, just one of you? Okay, a okay. few of you, right? And how many of you are like practicing like security practitioners? So um, I, I want to know like how low, like where I should go in terms of level setting. Like these tools are familiar to you, like it's, okay, right? So if you look at modern, so back in the 90s when I used to, write code, I mean, we had just terminal editors. I don't think there was even ID, you know. There are volumes of books where you have to memorize every library. I mean, it was pre-internet, right? Um, you have to know standard lib, all the functions, and which parameter goes where, you know. When you copy things, you always get confused, right? Is it the source or destination, right? But now it's different, you know. If you look at the modern um, software development life cycle, there's so many tools, right? Here you can see, for the code, there's GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, right? The build systems are very complex too, okay? And then most of the, when people think of modern software, they typically think of cloud, but there's software in everything. There's software in the watch, in cars, planes, right? So not everything is cloud, but you get the idea. So, so what's a CACD pipeline, right? I mean, if I'm the only developer writing code, I can do whatever I want, right? I write code whenever I feel like I can compile, I can test. But when you have a large team working together, right, how do you bring everyone's code? How do you build software in a reliable fashion, right? That's what the modern pipelines which you do. I, I remember in the 90s when you wrote code, uh, my team was about 100 people. It would take a week to just compile everybody's code. Everybody will use their own stuff. And somebody would have changed a signature you didn't know about it. When you brought all the code together, it was a mess. You know? But it's not like that anymore, right? You test often, you, you know, you compile, you build, test often, right? So, are you folks familiar? Most of you have heard of OWASP top 10. Are you familiar with the CAC top 10? Okay. <coughs> so, I think they kind of stretched it to 10. Maybe it was only 8, but, but, but the idea is, you know, just like 
though our top 10 you know, brought awareness to things like SQL injection, cross edge scripting, and, and the likes, right? These are new category of attacks. There's been a lot of attacks like solar winds, everything they fall here. They're not, a, they're not attacking the app. They're attacking the pipeline that's building the app, right? And so today we're going to see a live demonstration of, the, of that. Okay? okay, so now let's go to GitHub and spec uh, specifically. Okay? And how many of you have used GitHub? I know there's a bunch of developers, right? Everybody has a like cartoon, right? <laughs> this is fine. Some version control is fine, right? Um, and it's probably one of the most popular ones, right? I mean, when we, we work with both GitHub and, and GitLab and other customers, but by market share, I think we see GitHub the most. There are a lot of GitLab customers too, especially enterprise uh, who run on-prem. But uh, okay. so GitHub Action is a way where you can automate anything. You can automate your bill. I mean, it's left to your imagination. If you go and look at the marketplace, there's thousands of apps uh, that you can use for. Okay? So we won't go into the history or any of that stuff. We'll go right to the meat. Okay? So you have to be a little focused here, okay? So I'm going to show you a simple GitHub action. <laughs> so don't worry about the semantic of anything. All this action does is if somebody pushes code, it's just going to print a message, hello world. Right? We all have to start with hello world, that's how we learn. Okay, so I'm going to go to something a little bit more involved, right? So I have created an action. So what that action does is, if I create a GitHub issue, it's going to check the body of the issue to see if there's a word bug in it. And if there is, it's going to flag it, it's going to label it. Okay? So the best way to see that is by a live demo. Okay? You guys can all see, uh, see this, right? So I'm going to create a new issue. And let me call that issue one. I, I'm just you know, creating a sample issue, right? So what do you think will happen now? So I create an issue, it's going to kick off an action, right? And if everything runs, uh, right now there's no label. It's going to put a label calling bug, okay? So let's see what, what, where the action is. The action is running now. It's, it's completed. Okay? So the action is finished. So if I go back to the issues, you see there's a label bug now, right? It was not there before. Just to prove I'm not making this up, <laughs> I'm going to create another one, <coughs> issue two, and I'm going to say this is the user, right? It's not a bug. Right. So now it should happen, right? Right here, good action. So you can see I'm even echoing the output. You can see that you know, that's the action we're looking at, right? If I come back here, it works as designed, right? So let me go back to the actions. <coughs> so I want to look at the definition of this action. Okay? I don't know how hard this is to be. Probably very hard. <laughs> let me make it look good. I want you all to like, can you see, can, can you see out there? Or maybe you want to come up. <laughs> just, I, I, want to be, I want to just see, like, take a look at it. Do any of you see a problem with it? Do you see any security bug, right? All I'm doing is, I'm checking out the file, I'm echoing the title of the description, and I'm seeing if the body has a bug, I'm labeling it, right? Looks very innocent. Would you all agree? Because Got the uh, GitHub token. Where is the token? In the curl. Okay, I can't even comment it. Like, I mean, that was just for demo purpose. But <laughs> let's uh, imagine it's not there. Oh. You're good then? If, if this, if I remove this line 10 and 11, this is, you'll give a thumbs up, right? Yeah. All right. All right. So, I don't want to like spend all my time, you know, <laughs> typing, so I uh, <laughs> cheated here. Okay. Okay, 
expansion. Okay. Well, everything is bigger. So I'm going to create an issue. This issue is going to be an injection. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm trying to do an injection here. Right? So it's running. You still can read it, right? Okay. What, what happened? <laughs> right? I, I went into the operating system. I installed a package. And to prove, <laughs> I printed it, right? Now I'm in the system. Okay? So that's my reconnaissance, right? Now what can I do? <coughs> Once you know the inject, you can literally run any command. And I'm going to enter another command. This is why I said, please don't go out and try on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want you to start my responsibility. This is not a you know, get out of uh, get out of jail card. Uh, <laughs> right? So now let me go here. W what do you think this is going to do? Anybody? <laughs> All right. So before I go to that, okay, let me. Uh, this is where I need to. All right, so we've got a live exploit, right? We hacked it. So I got into the <coughs> OS, right? And if you look here, what happened is this um, thing here, that's where we did the injection. It just sim seems like a simple echo, right? But you all know if you do injection, right? I can terminate this echo and do ampersand, ampersand, and run any command I want. So how does the GitHub work, right? So GitHub is a, you know, it can be in the cloud, that's what most of them use, but you can also run it within your enterprise. Many companies do that as well. But regardless, when a GitHub action is triggered, there's a, a get, you know, there's a whole environment where the runner is, right? And the runner has to talk back to the GitHub to pull the code, to interact with it. And if you remember, when we did the labeling, it had to even use a token for the API. That's how it's authenticating, right? Okay. So, you know, you all know, like, you know, if you need access to your bank, you, you mm -hmm. sign up, you have a login name, password, MFA, right? But when programs have to access, they typically use an API token, right? Which could be at the system level, or it could be a personal token, right? And so you typically interact. Even in GitHub, if you're running an IDE and that needs to talk to GitHub, you will install a token for communication, right? And the tokens, by definition, will bypass all your MFA and everything, right? So, and this GitHub token is a special entity because the runner is creating a token on the fly. <coughs> it's not like your personal access token that's connected all the time. This is like, at most, you, it'll be for 24 hours, but still enough window to hack. So this is what I'm going to do now, okay? I'm going to run ngroc. Uh, you guys are familiar with ngroc? Um, it's actually a, um, it's a commercial product, but you can also download a free version. It, it helps you create a reverse proxy. So I'm going to run ngroc so that I have an internet address. And then I'm going to have the runner send some uh, exfiltrate uh, data, and then I'm going to take, get it on my laptop. Is this interesting so far, or I want to make sure that I'm not wasting all your guys' time? Okay, so this is my NGROC running. All right, so if you look here, what does NGROC did was I told I told it to um, use my local uh, host 11, port eleven thousand, right? So this is a now a public endpoint in the internet. You guys can't get, don't, don't mess with my computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, by the time the recording is out, you know, it's going to go away. Right? So now what I'm going to do is create a, um, a netcat for uh, listening, right? So remember, the, the, this is like a reverse proxy, right? It's just an intermediary. So it has to talk to something. So I'm creating a server, right? And that's my server, right? So to prove that you know, this is working, I can, for example, 
number is 15524. So I can um, actually, in my own computer, I could use a VM, but for simplicity, I'll just do my own computer. I'm going to run this here. Okay. So what basically happened is I've connected these two. Okay. If I say hello, hopefully it comes here. It did not. Five wall or something that's put in there. All right, one five five two four zero TCP. Did you have to include the uh, local host on the line on the other terminal? Um, here? No, the other one. This one? Yeah. No, okay. by default it should bind to that. No, what? You're right. It's exactly what it is. Good eyes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try it. No, it didn't work. I failed you, I'm sorry. All right, uh, let's see, TCP. Let's do something. Let's go to <coughs> right, so I'm going to trust this is working. So what I'm going to do is go to my runner and do another injection. See how that goes. Okay. Remember, before my injection was just seeing if I could get in. So now what I'm going to do is relay the host name of my runner to my machine. Right. So let's try that. From my runner, I got the host name. Now you get the idea. I can do anything <laughs> I want. Right? The next thing I am going to do is I'm not interested in the host name. I want sensitive tokens and stuff. Right? So I'm going to dump all the variables. There's too many windows. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just see how easy it is to have, right? Do you guys think there's obligations out there that you can do this to? <laughs> or turn <out> of them, right? <laughs> That's why I'm telling you, please don't go trying. Uh, I think I made a mistake. I actually didn't run, start this soon enough. Let me try again. The thing about live uh, presentation is it's not well rehearsed, right? that should dump all the environment variables here. <coughs> oh. Jeez. 
right? What do you think is in here? A lot of stuff. <coughs> like my eyes are not that good, but I should see the token somewhere. Guys, this is my system tonight. <laughs> you see these things? There you go. That's keys to my kingdom. The kingdom of Right? So, just like, you know, when it, for, I've been coding for 10, 15 years before I knew what SQL engine was, right? First time I saw it, like, oh my god, so easy to do. Same with any kind of injection attack, right? And they continue to still be, like, you know, if you look at apps, there are apps that, are, that have remote code execution, right? But we are, as a collectively, we are fortifying those production apps. But this pipeline stuff, nobody even knows about I mean, there are people becoming aware of it, and that's why the, these things are created. But I don't even need to hack your production app. Once I'm in, I can put whatever I want in your GitHub. Like, you know, I was talking to somebody at Solar Winds who was there when the breach happened. And I've heard wild theories about what happened at Solar Winds, right? Some say that it was such a sophisticated attack. And this, I, I don't know if I trust him. This is what he told me. It's a very simple hack. They got into GitHub, put the malicious package there, and the build process picked it. It wasn't as you know, sophisticated as everybody's claiming with such a simple hack, right? With this, I can put anything I want. So I will show you another script that will like, blow your mind away. <laughs> right, so till now I haven't messed with anything. I'm just getting data, right? Let me see where we are. <coughs> all right, so this is all. Is, is, is this confusing to you or is it clear, right? So I haven't, and grab is a gateway. Right, the runner, because the runner has to talk to something, right? I don't want to expose my machine, so I, I put it on the cloud to enter, and then that's sending data to me. <coughs> I can just talk a little bit about this, right? So when our research team found this, right, they went and <laughs> looked, searched, and they found a ton of uh, applications that had this vulnerability, right? and they, you know, they reached out and reported to a lot of them, right? So. Uh, we won't worry too much about what they are. But, uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right? So what else can you do, right? So you, sh you saw how I could um, exfiltrate sensitive information, right? I can modify your files. I can go make comments, right? but I will show that in a little bit, right? Okay? And those are, I mean, two big risks, right? If I can tamper with your code, then, like, I mean, you can have a world plus asset program, right? Yep, all good, good. Hacker came right, bypass everything, the build pipeline, they, they pushed their malicious code. Everything you did up until then didn't matter. Right. Then I had some backup slides in case the live demo didn't work. But yeah. right. so let, let's do something a little bit more fun now. Right. So what I want to do is so if you guys come here, right? I just want to prove it. There's only two files here, right? Agree, everybody? All right, I'm going to inject a new file. Right? Same technique. I'm not changing anything. I, I found an injection. I'm going to have a field day with it. So what this is supposed to do, hopefully it will work. There you go. So <coughs> it went out to the internet, downloaded, got some files, and checked it in here. Right? So if you have an automated build process, Guess what? You just picked up the hacker's file and boom, shipped it to all your customers. Since I'm a good guy, just say it's a malicious file, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the real one would. Right? So, so, so the, the reason you know we're doing talks like this is to um, help educate you know uh, folks on pipeline security. Everybody has heard about it, but seeing is believing. Like the power of 
seeing a hack, it took, I mean, this definitely took some time to search and find, right? But if this script is in the bad hands, right, it just doesn't take them a lot to do stuff like that. Right? right. So we did that. Okay, so now let's take, okay, that's fine, right? Let's do, see what we can do. So some of the things that uh, you can do is you know, try to avoid things like run script. Right? I mean, because yeah, it's run echo, but it's run. You know, you can <coughs> inject something and then it becomes a whole. You know, the the, the OS will pick it up, right? The second thing is you can uh, sanitize your input. And I'll show you specific steps, uh, steps, right? And then you can limit the GitHub token permission, but it's not always possible because sometimes there's a genuine reason why your action needs certain access, right? And then the bad actor can piggyback on that. Um, now those are some of the things you can do. <coughs> so this is how it'll look, right? But you can, you know, write your own thing or you can use some existing action, right? And even with the action, there's a lot of concern, right? Because actions could be community action, meaning somebody somewhere, you know, like everybody's like, oh my God, XZ happened, I can't believe it. I'm like, it's happening all the time. Like, do you think all the source code in the Linux kernel has been approved by everybody? There's millions and millions of lines of code, right? It's very easy to infiltrate. So if it's a community action, yeah, these things are going to happen. Okay? Like little things like you know, sanitizing your uh, input, like, like there are built-in uh, safety. So when you go through environment variables and stuff, you can avoid that. Um, and then within GitHub, you can by default make the token permissions very um, restrictive. So what happens is, um, like some of these injections won't work. I won't be able to write a file. Like if your GitHub action doesn't need to write to your repo, then don't give it write permission. Okay? Somebody tries to write, you'll fail. And this is something. Uh, like we see this all the time, right? So, um, if you look at the way you know GitHub or any uh, modern uh, uh, version control systems work, there's a main or master branch, and then there are feature branches, personal branches, right? And then when it's time, people create a pull request and ask the maintainer of the main branch, "I'm ready with my change. You know, bring them in, right? And then they review, approve, and bring it in. But in many repositories. Those are not set, so which means anybody can commit directly to a main branch, right? In that example where I showed you how I could add a file, but if this feature was enabled, I could only commit to a side branch. So still the maintainer of the branch has to bring that code in, and they would have caught it. They're like, what is this? You know, who, who is this person, right? But, I mean, they can still do it, but you know, it, it, it difference in depth, right? It's adding another layer. Um. <coughs> I mean, these are obvious, you know, okay. We also have a free tool, uh, it's called Simon. Uh, it's a build hardening agent. So if you, for example, if you put that in here, uh, then you can say in this example, so Simon, Simon stands for CA monitoring. Um, it will monitor your um, network, process, disk, everything. So in this example here, I'm saying this is my only domain I can connect to, right? You know how my script went out and got some bad files down? Those activities won't happen, right? Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with code call breach. Um, there, you know, the script was downloading malicious files from the internet, right? So those kind of things can be prevented. It's only 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we can do more Q&A. Right. So, I mean, as you can see, I mean, this is not like a vendor trying to, you know, spread fear. This is <laughs> you know, and um, you know, so some, so when you think of AppSec programs and when you're trying to fortify your applications, you know, don't think of security in the pipeline. Also, think about security off the pipeline, right? Which is all your dev tool system, right? How did Mercedes Benz lose their uh, source code? Their GitLab. Anybody could sign up for our account <laughs> and get the code. <laughs> they, they left the feature on. So it's a self-service mechanism, right? 
simple things like that. So uh, hardening, but this isn't a sophisticated attack, but like basic things like hardening your GitHub, you know, the SCM, right? Ensuring this branch protection. And the um, top CACD uh, threat thing, that's very, uh, it's very prescriptive. Like it, it will, you know, you'll get a lot of ideas when you, uh, or like what to do and what not to do. Um, so you know, those are things you could do. Okay? I'm surprised <laughs> my presentation was quick. But I hope it was helpful, you know, it was, uh, you learned something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a question. Please, please, so, yeah. <coughs> um, how do you know that, so uh, I, I think I will phrase it, uh, rephrase it. Uh, if we are using Jenkins mm -hmm. rather than GitHub Actions for our CICD mm -hmm. yeah. deployments, do you think that is vulnerable to these attacks? So you're saying get Jenkins and of GitHub action. Correct. Right? Yeah. yeah, so if you go to our blog, psycho.com, um, because I don't think so Jenkins had its own set of problems with <laughs> right? every every ecosystem has, right? And if something did, doesn't have an issue, it's because people haven't put enough time trying to hide it. Yeah. I know that one of the one of our application is using GitHub Actions, so I don't know <laughs> if we are vulnerable, but uh, I would like to know if that is the case then. So if you go to like psycho.com slash blog, and I'm sure there's enough article on the internet too, th there are some specific ones that, um, especially, you know, there were, um, um, there are some best practices you can follow in Jenkins. And um, you know we we did find some vulnerabilities in uh, Jenkins plugins and such. <coughs> so just like you know the CVEs for um, third-party libraries, Jenkins has their own security advisory. So if plugins have vulnerabilities in them, right, they put out an advisory. So which begs the question, you know, when you think about software composition analysis, people always always think about the co-dependencies with the production app, right? So if I'm deploying an app in the cloud, what are all the different libraries it's pulling in? But your dependency is also built-in dependency, not just deployed dependency, right? Um, your IDs, ID plugin, all those are dependencies in your software delivery pipeline, right? right? If one of your developers downloaded a bad plugin, that's, I don't know, it's the environment variable dumping out, you know, all, all the, sensitive information on the developer desktop is now known, right? So anytime you have a marketplace ecosystem, you have to be watchful on what those things do. So how to catch those, like, if, if a developer downloaded the, the like, uh, Oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen some companies, you know, moving to, like, I don't know, there's a terminology that's slipping my mind. It's kind of like a, do you remember back in the day when you had like Citrix workstation and stuff, right? It's not really your machine. Yeah. Like they have some virtual... Thin clients. Uh, huh? Thin clients. Th yeah, thin clients. But there's a special terminology. VDAs. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. VDAs, yeah. If people are using that. Um, in, in, in some organization, unless you're in the VPN, you can't even connect to the system, right? right. Only the, you can't connect with your, bring your own device. So a lot of things like that. No. And then, uh, yeah. Oh, I was just, uh, it's a different question. <laughs> Please, yeah. Uh, so um, I'm not exactly familiar with uh, build hardening tools. Would you be willing to talk more about that slash Simon? Sure, yeah. I mean, again, this is not a vendor presentation. I yeah, I know. I'm not <laughs> pitch my own product. So, like, we're a four-year-old company. When we came to the market, the first thing we did was securing build pipelines. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, we have customers from... 100 developers to 20,000 developers, right? Where we solve this particular use case. So hardening build pipeline is not like a single checkbox. There's so many things you have to do, right? Mm. If you think about, okay, how do I harden a Linux server? There's so many parameters to control, right? Like there'll be hardening guide on everything, like the series benchmark. Similarly for um, build hardening, depending on your ecosystem, there are different, different rules. Gotcha. Right? Uh, yeah. It could be as simple as like a stale user, you know? 
Like there are some, some are foundation blocks and then you just build on those in terms mm. of Gotcha. Thank you. How much of that, uh, those attacks are uh, <clears throat> available to unauthenticated users? Of, I was uh, not authenticated. Not at all? I mean, it's just an chicken, remember? Yeah. And that's why it's bad. What's that? That's why it's bad, you know. It's <laughs> <a chicken. laughs> well, it's authenticated, you are, you, you are narrowing the probability, right? But still, you could have a disgruntled employee, mm -hmm. right? One of the things, we, you know, there are companies who thought it was a great idea to encourage collaboration, said, everybody in a source code and then one person leaves and takes all their source code right now the whole company source code is gone so I mean you still need to have that segregation right some are only need to know basis In, in How much trouble do you think Microsoft is in, uh, or going to be in, once uh, word of this uh, really gets out? Which uh, these attacks, these oh, I mean, simple they, injection attacks? Like how, <laughs> you know, so Microsoft, like uh, they have controls too, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's like you know, if you go and buy a Microsoft PC, right? The operating system has a you know certain characteristics, but. There's also your own responsibility for as an owner of the laptop yeah. to protect it, right? If you just download whatever you want, you know, you have to have your antivirus and firewalls and, and just like that. I think <coughs> GitHub or Microsoft is giving so much power and flexibility to developers, right? But then if you really don't think about it and harden your system, right, just leave it everything at default setting, like you don't realize these things happen, can happen. Until somebody finds out. So I, I, our research team has already, you know, communicated to a lot of these people. Right? Otherwise, I would not be coming here. And, but my point is, like, there could be new stuff out there, right? Like, you, know, you may go back and see, hey, there's a kid have back, you know, we tried the injection, right? <laughs> we tried this. I mean, we can try it, but in the process, you know, uh, something bad could happen. But if, but if if you get permission. Right, from your organization, like you know, I want to make sure I want to hard, help harden those systems, then it's a different conversation. Are there any benchmarks for, you know, to prevent such attacks? Uh, for, I think the closest thing I've seen is the uh, CACD top 10 from OS. I don't think the CAS has something like that, right? SSDF is trying to come up with a secure software and development framework. Um, I, I can't know what the 800 218 or something. Uh, let me see what the standard is. So this is one, right? Secure software development framework. It, it covers everything, right? But the thing is, a lot of them are very high level. They can go into nuts and bolts of every system out there, right? So you have to have a high level understanding, right? And then when you go down, that's when each individual system has its own behavior, right? What you may be, may be able to, like for example, GitHub may not have a certain vulnerability, but Jenkins might have, or vice versa, right? Yeah, so connect with me on LinkedIn, you know, would like to stay connected. Um, well, I hope, you know, again, I didn't time it, so because it's a live demo, sometimes things don't work, you have troubleshoot, right? I thought it would take an hour, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised, you know, no, <laughs> everything went uh, <laughs> And thank you for your help with the host name. And <laughs> <laughs> right, so shall I conclude? Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>